adding all these things into our lives. We need His divine power. I don't know about you, but the first one, add to your faith virtue. Man, I can find some problems in my own life with that one. How many times am I unbelieving? How many times do I fall into unbelief? You know, that's why it took 40 years to make an 11-day journey. Unbelief. It's not pleasing to God. And unbelief, boy, can just creep in in a moment. Right? Unbelief is where you doubt uh, the character and the ability of God in your life. Uh, you know, that's really what it is. Faith and trust in God is believing that what God said He'll do, He will do it. Right? And so many times, I, you know, even in my own mind, I, I start working out a problem, working out a situation, and you would think that, hey, I'm up here a lot, right? I'm preaching this stuff. You would think that maybe I'd get a handle on some of it. But my default mode is usually, what am I going to do? How am I going to solve this problem? Right? Independence. You know, we celebrate independence. Hey, the 4th of July is coming up. Plan on eating a hot dog, right? <laughs> but we don't want independence from God. That's the sin of man. is wanting to be separate from God. Pride, I don't need God. You know, you'll be like God. You eat of that fruit, you'll be just like God. Well, if you're like God, guess what? You don't need God. Right? That's why you usually when you get married, you marry somebody different than yourself. If two exact people come together, well, one of them is probably not needed. <laughs> right? Strengths and weaknesses, they both come together. That's why you and your spouse are so different from each other. That's why you don't understand one another. <laughs> And that's where it continues to say, add knowledge, <laughs> temperance. Man, is this a marriage seminar or what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> add to God. What? <laughs> Brotherly kindness. I mean, Peter's saying, add all these things. Well, I tried to add them. It just didn't work for me. You know, it's like the, the man that said, yeah, somebody asked him about the Lord. He said, well, right now, me and the Lord... You know, we got issues with one another. <laughs> and another man said to him, yeah, let me know how that works out. <laughs> if you got issues with God, you got some pretty big issues. <clears throat> Get them worked out. <laughs> you know, God will allow you to... to uh, David talks about, I, I made my complaint to the Lord. You can complain to God. He can take it. <coughs> you know, he can take it. Let him have it. Let him have all your complaints. There you go. Just let him have that. That's something to do with it. Cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. And then look at verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God does not want you to be barren nor unfruitful. You see, these are some, I like it, it's some simplistic things, isn't it? May, they may not be simple to do, but, you know, we, we want the deep spiritual truths. We want, it, we want the meat. We want to understand everything and every picture in the book of Revelation. That's what I want. That's what's going to get me far. Well, praise God, that's a good thing to want, isn't it? But until then, you know, you can add diligence in your life. Hanging in there. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it, right? Hmm, that, that hurts for me to even say that. Right? Temperance. Knowledge. Are you, are, you, are you going on to know the Lord? Do you know Jesus? Are you, are you His? Right? Brotherly kindness. You know, I see a lot of brotherly kindness in this church and sisterly kindness. It's really good to see. Now, God wants to do it even more, doesn't He? Look at this. Brotherly kindness add charity. 
That's love, isn't it? And Jesus always brings us back to that, isn't it? Doesn't he? The new commandment I give you. Love one another. You know, we can't love one another without him. We can't love God without him. <laughs> we just cannot do it. So, we don't want, I don't want you to be unfruitful nor barren in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want to see you fruitful. I want to see you uh, filled with fruit. And then he says, verse 9, But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. A Christian who's not moving on in these things, well, they're just blind. They have forgotten an important piece of information that he who the Son makes free is free. They've forgotten that we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. They have forgotten that we're to reckon ourselves to be indeed dead unto sin, but alive unto Jesus Christ. You know, some of these things uh, that can plague us in our own personal life, uh, I tell you, you want to know how I've experienced deliverance in my own life? Whether it be from the past, the present, I've experienced deliverance by going on with Jesus. That in the morning I get up and me and the, the wonderful counselor get together. I praise God for counselors, but I thank God for the wonderful counselor. Amen?